Hi everyone, if you're an existing subscriber, hello and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome and why not hit subscribe now? I'm your host, Alicia Vittoria Keen, and I've been interviewing inspirational people and businesses to find out how and why they inspire others. This week, I spoke with Bowen Pies, Paul Bowen, to find out about his journey and how he found going on first dates. Hi Paul, welcome to the channel. To begin with, if you could just introduce yourself, who are you and what do you do? Hi, I'm Paul Bowen. I am a business owner at Bowen Pies. I'm also the guy off the viral vid on First Date Hotel. You've got a pie business with your dad. Why pies? What made you get into selling pies? Um, so um, my dad, like when, well, since I was a young lad, um, he bought a butcher's with a little pie shop and over the years, the butcher was great when it was first because everyone went to the butchers, but over the years with supermarket pressures, it just went down and down and down and down. Um, I, at the time, was I was just really into bikes. And that was my life. I wasn't business minded or, you know, you're just a young lad. You want to get involved in bikes. And that, and that was it. And then it was in 2013, I'd kind of stopped riding so much, um, kind of lost interest in, in realizing I was just employed. I was always buying and selling stuff and he just sort of said like you know can you come and help me out um and in that time we decided that the butchers just wasn't working um he kind of wanted to have an easier life selling pies and so we we did the pies and in like a year we like doubled the business without the meat um and then we doubled it again and and we just really just grew from there really um, and like like the likes of now, we supply places such as Man City. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's it, it's good to like come from like, especially for me, seeing it so small and and get into quite a, you know, like a large scale. It's it, we're still a long way behind the big boys, but it's it's good. In terms of the pie business, you're quite. Well, a lot of pies aren't necessarily on social media, but you are, you're very active on social media, not just with the pie company, but with other bits and bobs as well. Do you think that helps with the growth of the business as such? Well, a hundred percent. I was quite lucky when I first went in it in like 2013, Facebook and stuff like that was quite, um, you know, there wasn't very advertising or anything like that. You could share and it, everyone would see it. So when I started off with a wholesale, like stuff like that was really good because no other pie brand was doing it. I was on it. Um, so, you know, I, I got the head start straight away, but then also I, I kind of like devalued it and I just kind of concentrate because you end up in like a, you know, I ended up in the wholesale kind of side for the big customers and I kind of rejected it. And then with this coronavirus, um, I had to kind of go back to social media and go back to basically all my friends and the support on social media has just sort of saved the company this year. So, you know, the social media for me, well, 2020 absolutely just saved the business. In terms of wholesale and selling to just the general public, how does that differ? How, obviously you said there about there is a slight difference, but what is the difference? So uh, with that whole wholesale is, is is b2b so business to business um the idea is you sell it cheap there's no um with them. you know i mean it just kind of runs you know they pay you every week it's constant and and it kind of works out great the retail side is business to consumer so where you're able to charge a higher price, you've got a higher sort of effort involved um in getting them in keeping them making them happy um, and that there is a lot more work involved, but then there's a lot more profit. So it's, it's a balancing act of the two, to tell you the truth. And because we are probably now 50-50, um, you know, it, it is a balancing act to keep both sides happy. Obviously, you grew, helped grow the business. Have you always had those business skills or was it something you had to learn? Um, yes and no. I was always buying and selling stuff Um even when I was, I remember being at like pat lunch at like primary school and I'd sell me yogurt and stuff like that just to get a bit of money. And I think you always have that drive of, you know, selling and, and doing a little wheeling and dealing. I was a bit of a Dell boy. I still am a Dell boy. I still love a little, like, 
I do like a trade stall every now and again, and I love shouting. But then there's also the business side that I've learned a lot from my dad as well, like the old school business that, that is missing from a lot of people that I see, um, as well as things like you know YouTube and stuff like that, picking stuff up, mentors, um, people as influencers like Gary Vee, um, and just picking all that up really and just you know soaking it up like a sponge really. Taking into account what you just said there about being a bit of a devil boy, you are also involved in like investment and shares. Mm-hmm. Again, is that something you've always been interested in or is it um, money? No, it, it was just, um, to tell you the truth, it was something I kind of dabbled in um, and believe in it, it took like a massive loss um, in the coronavirus times and the, the fact that I had a loss drove me to make a profit, you know, as, as if like I don't want to lose it. I, it. It's almost a game to me. I don't want to lose it a game. And and I've been kind of like taking people a bit along with my journey and I'm beginning to make some, you know, reasonable profit. And it's just something I'm, ve- I'm very open me with figures and it's all, I always have little ideas and I'll always be so... Um, what's the word transparent I'll let everybody know I'll I'll show people my figures I show people my numbers both in any business Um, I'm not a millionaire by any means I'm not even rich I'm not I'm not even doing it you know I mean I probably take home a reasonable wage an average wage but it's it's all going to build up to eventually become something so that's why I'm quite like that and yeah so it's a bit of a tell by I'll just have a go at anything What's your reasoning for being transparent with your figures? Is it to help others or is it so you've got like a record? A bit of both, really. Um, I, I always think, um, you know, because anyone can say something. So, you know, you'll often hear people like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm really busy. I'm really busy. You know what I mean? I'm making loads. Oh, are you? And like, you just, you know, I mean, you don't know how to take it. What's loads? Is it a five or is it five million? You, you don't know. Or some people are lying, oh, it's not going well and stuff like that. Whereas I like to, you know, because I think there's nothing wrong with like saying that I'm not doing very well. Um, and if you're transparent about it, then, you know, people will support you, which I've had. Um, do you know what I mean? It's, it's not always about showing how brilliant you are and how good you are. And, and I like to show people so many lows as well as so many highs so that it's real and you know, when they experience either or, they can relate, they're like, oh, I, I, I was like that, or, you know what I mean? Whether it's figures or personality, I always like to just be so transparent and then people can relate to me, basically. It's nice that there are people out there like you who are so transparent because at the moment we do live in a world where all you see, especially again on back to social media, is the perfect world, the perfect life, the perfect look. So the fact that you're transparent is brilliant. Do you think that you probably have a better mental attitude because you're not portraying that you're someone who you're not? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think as, it, as I've grown up more, I'm 31, 32, um, I'm, I'm more transparent now than I've ever been. And I've been, I'm more respected now than probably when I was 24, spending like a bit of wage on like a fancy shirt you know trying to be you know I mean going into an art club thinking like a hundred quid shirt is going to get you a girl for instance or do you know what I mean you're going to get lads come up to you oh what do you do kind of thing you know what I mean and like now like I'll tell anyone right now my car on my drive has got 150,000 miles on it I bought it cash for like you know a couple of grand and it's, it's carrying on I don't know how it's still going but it's still working um but you know what I mean I'm not paying any monthly payments you know what I mean and stuff like that just I think if you're just transparent like look my car isn't the best but hey I'm not spending half my wage um you know trying to survive I'm using that money to invest in something else to buy something else to show and then at the end of it hopefully I'll have something to show for it I don't know what yet but um you know and I think just basically yeah just showing people how I am and how cheap you can live or how dear you can live you can relate and be like you know what I'm not going to buy that because that's going to skimp me I'm you know I'm going to be like Paul I do want to be influencing people in hopefully making like good decisions and hopefully when they look at me they can be like oh well Paul does it so yeah why not how do you get to that stage um a low point really 
um, because like I, I've been, I think everybody's been in low places before. And I think once you kind of like have been to a bottom or whatever you realize, and my dad's, there's a saying that my dad's always said to me and it just sticks with me all the time is it, there's always somebody worse off than you. And that is true. So if I live by that saying, no matter what I do, I always think, well, you know what I mean? I could do this. There's always somebody worse. You know what I mean? There's always going to be somebody struggling harder than you. So, you know, I mean, you've just got to carry on going and, and be cheerful and, and be happy. I'm, I love comedy. Do you know what I mean? I love making people laugh. But, you know what I mean? It's always, I always stick to that saying. And then you, you realize that, you know what I mean? I'm not actually doing that bad. Do you know what I mean? I've got maybe some eggs and beans in the fridge. I'm fine. Do you know what I mean? Or some weeks and, and just live by that, really. You said about the, you had a, quite a low point. Are you able to share that with us? Um, I probably could do, yeah. It was probably at a time when I was a lot younger and um, a typical heartbreak. Um, and at the time, it was at a point when I was employed and I would, you know, I'd literally just spend my money. Like, it was like your wage was like a, a challenge to spend it all. And then, you know, you get to the last few days in your skin and then I'd up my credit limit and then I'd up the credit limit more. And I remember there was one point and I was at the garage and I had to ring my mate up to come and lend me a tenner, drive literally down to the petrol garage just to give me a tenner um, so I could leave the garage. And I think at that point there, you're like, you know, something needs to change here. And you just kind of realise that, you know, this just work on bringing yourself up. And I think the more you start putting in positive people in your life and taking more positive people hanging around with you know anyone that's positive sort of leaving negative alone you know any kind of drama I always try and stay away from it um I always try and fill myself with positive people always try and look always try and positive spin things and you'll find that you know I mean it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight you know you don't just go home one day you know dump a load of friends get a load of new friends and you know, wake up the next day and go oh bloody hell I'm a brand new person and like oh, you know I mean I've made some money oh look at this it's, it's great but it doesn't work like that you know you just got to constantly work at stuff and eventually you'll just find that everything just works it's funny because we talk about this quite a bit on my channel about how the people who are around you if they're positive and not so negative then it will make you a positive person and that all of that influences who you are. So for you to confirm that as well in your situation, it just goes to show that it's true. Yeah, it is definitely true. You know, you, you just need that. A, a lot of the time you need that, like, kind of kick up the arse as well. Do you know what I mean? With, with positive people and, you know what I mean? People that will be honest with you as well. When I say, like, positive people, as, all, as, as, as good to have honest people, like, I've done the ideas before, I still do probably do ideas that are just not good. And I'll say to my friends, like, oh, you know, what do you think of this? And they'll be like, Paul, no. Like, do you know what I mean? Or on the other side, you'll have, um, you know what I mean? You'll have friends where you'll say, oh, I've had a bad week of sales this week. And they'll go, oh, don't worry, it'll pick up. Oh, don't worry, it'll pick up. Whereas really, your friends will say, what are you doing different? What can you do? How can you improve this? You know, they're trying to, you, you're trying to fix the solution rather than just, thinking it'll fix itself and that that's a real difference is having them friends does it help working with your dad and being quite close with your dad 100 percent. like my dad's like probably like my best mate like a mentor um i'm so lucky in the fact i realize you know i mean i've not had i've not had the the hard work of starting a business from scratch um i've already had the foundations there um i'm lucky in that aspect that i've had that um, and my dad, you know, has, has kept me grounded as well. Do you know what I mean? Because again, I am quite wild, and it'd be like, look, you need to, you need to calm down, and you know, what I mean, go about things the different way. And I've also learned a lot from his mistakes that he's told me, in because he's been in business for a long time before the butchers. You know, what I mean, he's always had little bits of business, so I've always picked that up. I've learned from his mistakes. Um, I still make mistakes. I think everyone makes mistakes. Um, so it's good to have him on board. He's like I say, he's a best mate, and I think he's he's taught me a lot of. He's just a grafter, my dad. He just, you know, what I mean, he's just a really workaholic. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of glad that I've come in there and sort of, you know, I'm trying to get him to work smart as well as hard. I think there's a there's a you do need to have a balance. These, you know, a lot of people like oh, work smart as well, um, and because it's so small, we we do work hard. You know, we do sometimes 
50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week and not think of anything of it. Um, you know, and it's just, it just is what it is. And I'm lucky to have my dad, basically. Sounds like you do get, definitely get your work ethic from him. Yeah, definitely. You know, like I say, he's, he is old school. He's, he's 60 now. So he's, he's come from that era that's, that's a lot, that's a lot harder graft, you know, and I do, I do see it. Um, you know, I mean, like, obviously I've been in the business for a long time now. I employ 25 staff. Um, and, you know, you do find that, you know, each year kind of thing, the, the younger ones that are coming in, like, almost like say younger, I'm like only 32, but like, you sort of, eight, you know, eight, each year you kind of, you kind of go down a year or whatever, as you bring new people in and they are, they are, they don't work as hard as, as the older guys. Um, it, you know, you can see it and, and the ethic is totally different. So it is mad to see actually, side point. And people learn from their mistakes. Again, that goes back to what you were saying about you're learning from your dad's mistakes. Those youngsters who are coming into the business will start to learn that if they don't work as hard compared to that, they won't get as good results. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, I think it's, it's a big jump as well. Um, a lot now from like school, um, you know, I mean, to going into a real life work, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll hear about it all the time. Like it's not as tough as school as it was. And it probably isn't. And it's, you know, I mean, I'm not doubting that it's any better or worse. Um, they're just, it's just a different era. Um, you know what I mean? But it's also good to have a, a good mix in there because while they don't learn from, like, they, they do learn from their mistakes and they are a bit different, there are some still good ideas from the younger team. Um, you know what I mean? There's, there'll still be some great ideas or there'll be a bit of a revelation and they'll have a bit of an idea sometimes and, and that works as well. So, you know, it's not all bad having young people, um, you know, in, in the business. It's just different. Going back to the start of this interview, you said about when you introduced yourself, you said that you were on first dates. Mm -hmm. What made you sign up to first dates? Um, again, um, I always wanted to be on telly from a young age. Um, I've been to Big Brother auditions. I've like, applied for loads of different things and got like applications. And it was just something I'd never give in at. So I've been applying since I was like 19 for different things. Um, and I think I'd done the lab Bible video prior to applying to this time. And because at the time I was all like, I was single and again, like with my comedy, I was always kind of prey on the single kind of line. People would always tag me in stuff like first dates hotel. And um, it was just so happened this time around I'd applied and they were like, do you want to come to Italy? I was like, yeah. And just took, took it the bull by the horns and off I went. So it was, kind of a little achievement for me I, it was something that I just wanted my five minutes of fame and I got it and and that was it I'm done now <laughs> and what was the experience like was it a good experience was it oh, it, expected? oh it was fantastic do you know what I mean it was it was really good it, it, it was a lot different than what I thought it would be and uh, I thought oh, you just get to swan like swan around in the hotel and do what you want and then you had the date, but realistically, there's a TV camera crew. Do you know what I mean? There's all the cameras about. Um, do you know what I mean? But the experience was just, it, it was just really good. So I had a good day. It, it didn't go past the date, but it was, you know what I mean? Everything was, everything was just a great experience. And it was something that I'm, I'm really glad that I, I like, took part in, basically. On first dates, you also revealed, whilst you were like, on the date, that you actually wear a wig now yes. looking at you now you wouldn't even tell obviously the person who you were on the date with couldn't even tell either what was your reasoning for wanting to reveal it there and then um well i've kind of obviously i've revealed it before i've gone on the date but I, I always like to i'm like i said i'm very transparent um and it was a way of me showing people especially young lads when we go back to sort of being in down places um for me I lost my hair very young um and it, it was something that always got me down and then when I got the, the the wig basically it just transformed my life um you know what I mean I, I am a lot happier now um I feel better again it's just all you know going back to sort of if something's getting you down you need to do something about it and, and you know I, I did, did like me that have been down about this and 
you know what, like, I'm going to share it. I'm going to give experience. If you want to take it, um, take it and, you know, change your life. And I've had like literally thousands of guys gone and done the jump and just thanked me basically. And it, it is just a really good feel factor. How old were you when you started to lose your hair? 16. No, no lie. Like, yeah, like, so it's 16, um, 18, it was looking a bit, 21, it was, it was just gone. So, uh, yeah, so and then I re got my hair at 27. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In terms of, obviously, you do a lot on social media about wearing the wig again, it comes down to that transparency. But what is your main aim? Is it just solely to help others? Again, it's a little bit of everything, probably um, primarily. Yes, it was, uh, and, it, and it is to help lads, um, because at the time when I'd done the Lab Bible video, I'd got quite a lot of commission off the, the company that I was using at the time, and I would just have to refer people for that. And it was a, it was a bit of a cash cow, really, to tell you the truth. I was just going, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was passing people on, but I wasn't really giving people any information or any, you know what I mean? I was just kind of passing it on, and I kind of felt guilty over the years. And it was something that I wanted to do for a long time it was just to sort of break stuff down help again helping lads out but then also in the back of that I have to think if I want to set up say maybe a hair product range or if I want to set up my own hair like wig place I've got the option to do that whether I take it it's up to me but I'm just building the foundations of something like I said with the shares there's a foundation there that if I want to go into something else I've got it or if I get time to do something else I've got it but I, it is costing me no money to do what I've been doing I've already got like commission stuff off companies for doing from YouTube so it just doesn't it, th there's no harm in doing it and I, I enjoy doing it as well I'm getting into the like the videos inside and stuff like that like yourself you know what I mean I think you'll enjoy you know editing and stuff like that so it's just it's just a good thing to do to tell you the truth and I, I think if you've got something like yourself or like myself that why not do it it doesn't cost anything for people who are watching this if they do want to get advice from you where do they go um on the her side it's just literally go on to youtube and just search paul bowen her and you'll find me there um or my instagram at bowen 67 i do tend to like reply to most messages and um, i do get i do get a lot of messages and um, but I, you know give me give me a few weeks and i will get to oh thank you very much for sharing your story finally i do have 10 very quick questions yeah are you ready go favorite pie chunky steak Ooh. favorite tv channel four okay what color is your toothbrush black with white toothpaste down it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. One thing you'd put on your bucket list? Jump out of a plane. Good one. Favourite book growing up? Harry Potter. It's the only book I've ever read. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, straight up. I've only read that book. I'm shocked. I'm, I'm dyslexic. I don't really read a lot. But there okay. we go. <laughs> Um, who do you admire the most? Travis Pastrana. Who's that? He's a freestyle motocrosser um, and he's just someone I've always looked up to um, and he just, just lives the life basically. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's, he's the man for me. Okay. Just, just, just as a fun factor, kind of like it, that's like, you know, there's business people and there's fun people and he's just a fun person. And, and although, you know what I mean? It's not all about making money and you would expect I would follow like maybe Alan Sugar or someone like that. He, for me, he's just like, he's just a mad like, I think because I've, I've just followed him as a young boy. Cool. Favourite memory? Probably being um, younger when my mum and dad were together and spending a Christmas, I would, I would probably think when I was a, a younger boy and um, having sort of a really good family experience, really. It's just, I think it's something you just can't, can't forget. Yeah, that's very true. Wherever in your mind. Yeah. If you could get to yourself anything in the world, if money was no object, what would you get? It would be um, a big piece of land 
um, just to build some like some into motocross, just some motocross tracks, um, some speedways, some just extreme sports um, parties, just just a real sort of lifestyle place um, and buildings and shops, just just basically my own village. <laughs> Uh, Nike or Adidas? Um, probably Nike. Fair enough. And what confuses you? Spelling. Don't get it. Just can't. I just. Uh, it's probably my biggest downfall. But um, yes, yeah, spelling. Just, just. I can read a word. It looks fine to me, but to everyone else, it looks rubbish. It, you probably see it on my social media a hell of a lot. But that's me. I've not noticed it. It as of yet, so <laughs> you will. <George. laughs> well, thank you very much for your time today. It's been great having you on the channel. Thank you very much as well. It's been great doing it. It just goes to show that if you're going through something, you're not alone. There's someone else out there who's also going through the same thing. As we heard Paul talk about when he was going bald, like I imagine for any person. He found it really difficult, but by speaking out, he realised that there were so many other people out there going through the exactly the same thing, and he was actually able to help them. Now, you can follow Paul at the links here. If you have someone that's inspired you, comment below. I'm always so interested to find out who others find inspirational. Likewise, if you have an inspirational story to tell, comment below drop me a message on social media or even drop me an email. I'll be back here on Sunday at four o'clock to inspire your story.